Hello again, everybody. I'm Chris Lee of Southeastern 14, joined by my baseball partner, Alfred Esmond. We're going to talk power rankings heading into week nine of SEC baseball. We were almost to the halfway point of league play. Got two 11 and one teams. One you might have thought, one you might not have thought. We'll get into those guys. We'll get into everything else. A reminder first of all, our content brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. We are down to the final two teams of the NCAA tournament. Bet Online has been your tournament bracket headquarters all March long. Now that we're almost here to the champion, we've still got a lot more in store. MLB is here. NBA, NHL playoffs are around the corner. As always, Bet Online is the number one source for your summer sports wagering. Head to Bet Online today. Stay updated on all the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Alfred, we're getting a little bit more clarity, I think, at the at the very top in terms of maybe who the top half of the league is. I think you can debate it towards the middle, but there's a, about a five that are pretty clear to, to me and you and probably to most people. The bottom for the first time is not clear. We've got opinions on that, and we made some decisions accordingly, but it's not clear in case – if you watch past videos, they, we had a clear 14. This week there was a little debate at it, and, and boy, we had some wild stuff. I'm sure you you followed Twitter or were watching Saturday night that while the world was distracted with basketball, including me, we had a kerfuffle in Starkville mm-hmm. that resulted in some obje- ejections in a one-run game followed by a one-run game the next day. Uh, exciting weekend in SEC baseball, some unpredictability, um, and, and just all sorts of stuff we saw. Yes, a lot of a lot of shifting. I told you before we got on here. Uh, most of mine was at the bottom. I felt like, and that's because I felt like those that are shuffled towards the top are going to kind of remain there for the majority, at least, of the season going forward. Um, a lot of teams, you know, starting to get exposed, so to speak, with what they're about and what they're made of, and things like that. Their flaws are starting to really come into the picture. Whereas the first part of this SEC play schedule they weren't as there as much but we're starting to see who's about it and who's not down the stretch well we'll start at the bottom number 14 missouri and we had a tie in the voting and so when i have a tie i break it between about three computers i use which are warren nolan's elo uh, the kpi ratings that the ncaa is going to use this year and kenneth massey's predictive rating he's got a a predictive and just a regular rating i use that to break ties just to differentiate a little bit so we came out missouri at 14 with that but the the tigers and i'm going to do most of the first part of the power rankings we split it up into half and half here and it turns out i've got about most of the the bottom half of the power rankings alfred's got most of the top half which is why he'll be silent for a bit here but (laughs) missouri uh discovered some pitching this weekend in a sweep of Florida, saw that team pitch last weekend at Vanderbilt, pitched very well, gave up 13 runs to Vandy, pitched well enough this time to sweep Florida. Uh, not the most talented team are the Tigers, but they're doing a good job getting the most out of what they have. Logan Lunsford, six shutout innings. Javin Pimentel throws five innings of one run ball. So they got two great starts. Ryan Magic, I guess, is now they're. Closer by default had a two inning save. Missouri shocked the college baseball world in beating Florida, but still a little gap between the Tigers and the rest of the league. But that's closing. Ole Miss is really struggling. And right now, actually, Missouri has got a better record in conference than do the Rebels. Uh, and, and you could see that flip here in a week or two. Ole Miss just struggling mightily to pitch. I think the Rebels have given up more runs than any team in the conference. Um, You got some guys doing some good work. Andrew Fisher's having a nice season for Ole Miss, but the the pitching has just, and the defense have left a lot to be desired. Ole Miss has got a minus 49 run differential. It's given up 105 runs in the SEC. And overall, let me see if I can find this. Ole Miss has given up 214 runs. That's the most in the league. By contrast, Arkansas has given up 82. Uh, so that's the difference between the best and the worst pitching in the league. If if you can't pitch, it's hard to win. It's hard to pitch right now, but you got to get better than what the Rebels are, are giving you on the mound right now. All right, next up at number 12, 
Auburn, and I'd say a pretty decisive number 12. Auburn gave up, I think, was it was it 17 home runs to Tennessee this weekend, Alfred? Yeah, it, it was a whole lot. I'll get into Tennessee yeah. in a little bit, but they did what they normally did, hitting the home run ball. But, yeah, Auburn gave up a ton this weekend. Yeah, and, and there were there were guys on the other side of that giving them up. Uh, Auburn's pitching is just a mess right now. It, Auburn's got a capable lineup, but I think just between problems with getting anybody to get outs – on any sort of reliable basis and just the brutal schedule Auburn has played. I mean, goodness. And and I think you've seen this a lot so far. You got some teams that really hadn't played anybody but the bottom half of the league. And then and you got Auburn, which has played at Vandy, Arkansas, mm-hmm. at A&M, Tennessee, uh, and oh, by the way, Kentucky coming up this weekend, followed by at Mississippi State. Oh so it doesn't God. really get a lot easier for Auburn anytime <laughs> soon. I don't know what Butch Thompson has done to, to really tick off the baseball gods. The three teams Auburn doesn't play this year, Florida, South Carolina, and Georgia, which are all middle of the pack or lower in, in our rankings this week. So uh, poor Auburn. Butch Thompson always seems to figure it out towards the end of the season. Uh, but, man, he has got his work cut out for him this year. All right, number 11, we've got Alabama. Which started like a house on fire. What was Alabama? Was it 12, 13, 14 in a row to start the season? I don't remember now, uh, but really struggling now. Alabama took two out of three against Tennessee to open SEC play. The Crimson Tide, I think, have now won two games in the last three series. Uh, just got boat raced by Kentucky and Lexington, scored three runs. Uh, pitching injuries are starting to take a toll on Alabama. Uh, Greg Farone couldn't throw strikes this weekend. Gage Miller, who's been debatably the second best bat in the league behind Charlie Condon, uh, did not hit this weekend. Uh, it has gone south for Alabama in a hurry. We'll see if the Crimson Tide can get it back. I think Alabama's a better team than it's shown of late, uh, but my goodness, they get Arkansas and AM the next two weekends, although both those are in Tuscaloosa, and that does help a little bit. Up next in our power rankings, at number 10, LSU. I saw the Tigers this weekend. Uh, Boy, the the pitching started great. Uh, They've got one guy they can depend on on Friday night. Eh, I say that, maybe one and a half, because Gage Jump has been pretty good at times. Uh, But Luke Holman was perfect out of the gate. I think he retired the first 14, 15 hitters he faced. And then the bottom basically dropped out for LSU's pitching the rest of the weekend. Now, Tommy White hit a couple home runs in one of the games. Uh, Jared Jones is is one of the better hitting first baseman around. He's good. But I just don't think they've got quite the lineup depth they had a year ago. And, again, part of this is schedule because LSU has played some teams so far. And to be specific about that, their SEC series at Mississippi State, Florida, at Arkansas, Vandy, Uh, By the way, Tennessee and Knoxville coming up this weekend, so not getting any easier for the Tigers either. Uh, But the pitching just hadn't been there. Gage Jump was good for part of his start, then it kind of fell apart. I don't think anybody in that bullpen was good for LSU all weekend. And then they were just going committee on Saturday, game three. Javin Coleman started, hardly got an out. Uh, It was just a disaster for them. Really, as soon as Holman's perfect, string of batters ended. The pitching just wasn't very good. Uh, LSU's got a work cut out for it. Uh, This clearly not the team it was a year ago, but hey, LSU had probably, debatably, the two best players in the country last year. Dylan Cruz, uh, you could debate him or White Langford, take your pick. And of course, Paul Skeen's on the mound, but the the pitching is just nowhere near that this year without Skeen's. Um, and, And LSU is really starting to feel that. All right. Next up in our rankings, at number nine, Georgia. I think we might have ranked Georgia too low. Uh, Warren Nolan's ELO's got Georgia 19. KPI's got Georgia 13. Massey's power rankings have Georgia at 16. This is a team that's five and seven in the league and lost a one-run game on Sunday in the finale of Mississippi State and also lost, what was it, six to one on Friday night in between one, a 3-2 game with some unexpected pitching. But Georgia, I think, is it is it second in the country in home runs? It's it's Tennessee and Georgia, I think, in that order. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Charlotte Condon has kind of slowed down. 
But they've got some other dudes in that lineup who can really, really hit. Um, and, and boy, are you seeing that. Florida, uh, would, would you like to explain, since you had to be silent so long, now we're getting to your territory, Alfred. Uh, yes. What what happened to the Gators? Is it, because I'm telling you, I did not see a sweep at Missouri coming. Yeah, they, they're, uh, their pitching woes that we were worried about early in the year uh, reared their ugly head this weekend. Uh, when you look at it, Cade Fisher and Liam Peterson now with ERAs of 6.60 or more between the two of them. That is not good because that is two of their main guys out of the rotation. Um, they're second to last in team ERA and second to last in walks allowed. So they're just really letting teams hit all over them. And I believe Missouri had double-digit runs and at least one of their wins this weekend. So very concerning, especially since considering Missouri you know, on a yeah. talent – on a talent basis, yeah, can hit. And it's just not as good on paper as they are against Florida by any means. Um, also, Florida is last in the SEC this season in saves. They only have three, which is very, very concerning. Um, that just does not bode well for them. And the worst part about Florida, we're talking about the schedules in the future. Uh, they don't have an easy midweek this week. They're going to Tallahassee to play Florida State. Ooh. And, yeah, Florida State beat them 16-3 to the first time in Gainesville, and they're 18-1. and uh, at home in their ballpark. So that is not easy. And then Florida also, thank goodness for them. I mean, they have a home SEC series against South Carolina. You know, I think that one, honestly, for me, up in the air with who can come out with that win. But they, Florida doesn't have a tune-up. I mean, they have that Florida State team that once they get going, they are red hot. They have slowed down in ACC play a little bit, but they're by no stretch. They're still a top 25 team shoe in in college baseball so they're by no means an easy easy game and i don't know florida if they're going to figure their pitching out i don't see it really happening against uh florida state maybe south carolina but they got to be careful because i'll get into south carolina in a little bit they like to get yeah. walked a lot um it's just not it, it's just was a very discouraging weekend for the gators and they're missing they're kind of like lsu in the sense they're missing some of these top guys and they can't let jack caglione pitch every night and hit every single night i mean so they're gonna have to figure this out with their pitching and we'll see we know how um we know how they are with pulling pitchers early and whatnot but even still with two of your top guys in your rotation with six and a half eras and over it's just not looking good for florida right now yeah, they, they can't decide who needs to be starting, who needs to be closing. The constant had been Jack Caglione, who'd been great this year, but he got touched for, I think, seven runs in an inning or in a third or something like that this weekend against Missouri, uh, which, again, just has not hit, I think, still last in the league in scoring in league mm -hmm. games by a wide margin. So, yeah, Florida did stay in the top 25 this week at D1, but I think it's dropped from, uh, I think, 6 to 24. You never see a team drop that much this late in the season, but um, people have been on D1 for not dropping Florida for the midweek performance. Uh, but now you, you throw in a bad weekend with it. That that gave them cover to do it, and I, I don't blame them for doing so. All right, next up, Mississippi State. This is the team that the computers don't like as much, but I look at the construction of the roster. The pitching's been much better this year. Uh, they've got a little bit of depth. Their starting pitching has been pretty good relative to most people. Mississippi State six and six in the league, but plus twenty four in run differential. That's pretty good. Uh, every team behind State has got a negative run differential in the league, and and even one team ahead of State has got a negative run differential in the league. Uh, but I, I like this team, like the grit it showed against Georgia this weekend. Everybody has seen that Johnny Long ejection, and both both sides caught bullets in that game, missing guys, and you're playing pitchers in left field and all sorts of stuff. The SEC kind of rectified some of its mistakes going forward and I think in rescinding some of the suspensions. But uh, State rebounded from a really tough, tough, tough loss late Saturday night, came back and won a very dramatic game three that went down to the wild Sunday, They went in the late innings in a one-run game. So uh, I think Mississippi State may be a little bit better than, than people are, are giving it credit for, for being. But we'll see. State's um, – Got some good series coming up. Looking forward to seeing those guys in Nashville here in a few weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, the South Carolina Gamecocks. Boy, I think there's a lot of split opinion on this team. I continue to be higher than on Carolina. I think a lot of people are. I think D1 dropped Carolina out of the poll this weekend. 
Um, frankly, I, I think South Carolina's a better team than Florida, which is in there, uh, what, whereas the Gamecocks are not. Look, you, you lose two out of three this weekend to AM, but a lot of people are doing that. You swept Bandy a couple of weekends ago. Uh, what did you make of the Gamecocks this weekend, Alfred? Yeah, one thing uh, I watched with South Carolina, I think the part of the problem is they had a tough matchup with a and I think a and matched up with them very, very well. And the reason for that is I kind of alluded to it talking about Florida. South Carolina likes to get walked a lot. Uh, they're the leader in SEC in the walks they've gathered, and that's where a lot of their offense comes from. And if you look there, team batting average is 270, but their on-base percentage as a team is 420, 426. So, you know, they're, they're a team that just gets on base in other ways other than hitting. But you look at a and m uh, A&M was top five in the league and walks allowed. They don't give up a lot of walks. And in the two wins A&M had over South Carolina this weekend before Sunday, they gave up a combined five walks over the coast of the coast over the course of those two games. So A&M just wasn't getting, letting South Carolina get on base if it wasn't bat to ball contact. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was huge for them. Uh, also South Carolina, they do get walked a lot. It's a weird mix, but they also get struck out a good bit as well. And, that happened this weekend. Over those two wins a and had, South Carolina struck out 28 times. Uh, the pitching staff for A&M was really just kind of letting them have it throughout, and runs were hard to come by for that team. So I think South Carolina kind of got the wrong end of the stick with a bad matchup this weekend. They have a chance, again, we said it against Florida, they have a chance this upcoming weekend to bounce back against a Florida team that's just floundering a lot. And you know, against a team that can't pitch and can't really find the zone that well. South Carolina can live and eat off that with how much they get walked. So uh, South Carolina, they're still in kind of the territory of, I don't know really what to make of them, (laughs) even still at this point. But, uh, you know, they have a chance to kind of make their name against Florida. And again, with, you know, just how they're able to get on base without hits. And I know we talked about how the matchup was bad, or I talked about how the matchup was bad for them against A&M. It Kind of, yeah. I think it almost favors them a little against Florida this upcoming weekend. Yeah, um, I speaking of Florida, I remember watching that series last year when they played, and, and South Carolina's got a lot of the team back that that I think took two out of three from memory against the Gators mm-hmm. year. It might have been three out of three, but I think it was two out of three, or they might have had a game right now. I don't remember. I do remember watching the series, and Carolina really kind of took it to Florida. Carolina's got a lot of guys back off that team last year. Uh, as for Florida, a lot of guys, especially on the pitching end, are not back. So that that's going to be one to watch going forward. I, I still think Carolina's a good team. The series have come at Ole Miss, Vandy, at Alabama, A&M. So maybe not the toughest schedule, but they're 6-6. Six and six, They're minus five run differential. Um, lost a, a series 2-0 to Clemson earlier in the year, but they were one-run games. Clemson is probably one of the best two teams in the country. So don't, don't sleep on South Carolina. I think people are. I don't really understand that, uh, but it, but I think this team still got potential to be pretty good. All right, next up in our rankings, this is when we get into the top five, and I think this is where just about everybody's pretty clear on who the top five teams in the league are, uh, whether it's us, whether it's the pollsters. It's just a matter of where you order them. We've got Vanderbilt at five this week, and I, I think that's the right spot based on body of work. Vanderbilt took two out of three this weekend at LSU, a much, much needed series win for the Commodores. In fact, Vandy's first two wins on the road this year. Vanderbilt's not played a lot on the road. The only road series it had, they were swept at South Carolina, what was now three weekends ago. Now, Vanderbilt did get a neutral series win in Texas in in what was kind of a semi-road environment. So I don't mean to mislead people and say Vanderbilt wins all its games at home. That's not true. But I think getting LSU on the road this weekend, Commodore's got a plus-20 run differential. Carter Holton was terrific. Now, their other two starters were not very good, but I think there's more for those guys than they showed. Uh, Keep an eye on Vandy. This is a team that felt like it started to put it together maybe a little bit this weekend. Vandy with a big series in College Station this weekend. All right, next up, Tennessee. Um, I think Tennessee easily a top-7-8 team in the country. Question is, where do we rank them? We rank them at four here. By the way, Tennessee number one in Kenneth Massey's power rankings. Now, his overall rankings, he got a power rankings and a separate ranking. Uh, they're both on his baseball ratings page, but he's got them number one in what is basically predictive ranking uh, because they score runs like there's no tomorrow. 
Uh, so I, I know you got a lot of chance to watch the Vols this weekend. Um, I don't know where you start with the offensive carnage. I think there were so many home runs. <laughs> I couldn't begin to tell you what to break down first, but I have added here. Yeah, they uh, and an interesting note about Tennessee, they didn't have Billy Amick this weekend, who's been yeah. a lights out bat for them. He's having trouble with appendix issues. I don't think it's anything life threatening, thank goodness, no. but it's uh, just something they're wanting to monitor. And he, sh- <laughs> he shouldn't play baseball with something like that. So they kept him sidelined. He was in Auburn in the dugout, but didn't play. Uh, quite frankly, they didn't really need him. Didn't need uh, him. They, no, they, they were letting home runs fly once again. Dalton Bargo. I made the mistake last week. That wasn't his first home run. He's had multiple. I think he's had like six or seven this year now after this weekend. But he had two this weekend. Blake Burke had one and three RBIs in Sunday's game. Uh, Blake Burke's now the all-time leader in home runs in Tennessee history following this weekend. Uh, right around early 40s, somewhere, 41 or 42, I believe. Uh, Christian Moore was co-SEC player of the week. He had three home runs and 10 RBIs over the weekend. Uh, he is rising very quickly in draft stocks for the MLB, for those of you who followed that. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's been – the bats all around the infield for Tennessee were very impressive. And just a quick little pitching note for Tennessee, Drew Beam, very impressive uh, outing for him. Eight strikeouts and seven innings of work, just one, uh, one earned run off of three hits as well. And Tennessee, you look at just every batting, hitting statistic in the SEC, they – probably lead it you could probably guess that uh they lead in home runs batting average rbis they're uh first in doubles which is huge when you can get extra base hits like they do uh and they're first in doubles by a good bet i think they have 18 more than vanderbilt who's in second right now in doubles in the sec so yeah this is a team that can hit and they don't really hit base hits they get multiple base hits which are doubles triples and home runs And when you get a good start out of your pitchers like Drew Beam, which has been kind of a question mark for them, uh, they tend to win games. And they had – I can't remember what game it was this weekend, but they had 19 runs and one win this weekend. They uh, Just lighting it up. That was the the Sunday game, yeah. Sunday game, yes. So the Sunday game. And they're lighting it up all over the place. And they got LSU coming in uh, next weekend. The Luke Holman start might be tough for them, just depending on how he can pitch. And I'm willing to bet Luke Holman will give them some pretty good work over the course of that game. But if LS- LSU can't find pitching, Tennessee may do what they did to Auburn, especially when they're in their own ballpark, which tends to let balls go out at a high rate. Yeah. Yeah, they, very impressive. It's hard to hit that many doubles uh, when you're getting that many out of the park. So that's really impressive. Um, yeah. Number three, Kentucky, and I think I think there's an argument at two. I, I don't know that we we didn't make it. I don't know that most people would make it, but hear me out here. AM's eleven and one in the league, run differential in the SEC of plus 71, 114 to 43 in league games. Now the now the next biggest run differential in league games is is Arkansas, and you'll hear from the Razorbacks in a little bit. It it um I'm sorry, it's Tennessee at 42. So we're getting to the spot where the three and four teams are the, the one and two and run difference in the league. Uh, look, I, I know the schedule has not been the greatest in the conference. Uh, the, the series are against Georgia at Missouri at Ole Miss, Alabama. I think Alabama was still ranked this weekend uh, or maybe fell out in D1, I'm not sure. So I, I get that it's not. The toughest part of schedule, and boy, that's coming. Uh, Tennessee, South Carolina, Arkansas, Florida, Vandy on the back half, although just two of those on the road. Uh, and, and Auburn this weekend is the other one. That one comes first. Uh, but N- Nick Mangione has just done an incredible job. They, they have three starters, I think, that went seven innings this weekend. Nobody does that anymore. Holding Alabama to three runs. Uh, just a, a masterpiece of a weekend for Kentucky. Um, finally, the Cats get to do. I think they've cracked the top 10 this week at D1, and I love those guys. I think they do a good job, but I, I think they probably had a case to be in there before now. But, uh, hey, what, one, day, one way to get respect is go 11-1 and one in the SEC and 27-4 and four overall. That's what Kentucky is. Actually, the next team up is A&M. Um, and those guys, Alfred um, – Kentucky's 27 4. AM's 28 and 4. Now they're 8 and 4 in the league. Run differential is a little less, but I think we talk about best pitching staffs in the league. 
A&M's easily in that top five conversation. Uh, I don't know what else stands out to you about the Aggies. Braden Montgomery's having an incredible year, but what did you see from A&M this weekend? Yeah, I talked about them a lot. Again, they played South Carolina. I talked about them with South Carolina. They they really didn't let the Gamecocks get comfortable in their own game, and a lot of that was credited to their pitching. Uh, Ryan Prager was lights out on the mound in his start against South Carolina, six and a third, four hits, uh, gave up two earned runs, and had 12 strikeouts over the course of that time. Uh, he, he was – and no walks either. And, again, we talked about how South Carolina likes to get walks. Didn't let them do that. He had to, he forced them to hit the ball and get it in play. And that really was the story from the start. Um, the Saturday game, South Carolina matched AM's hitting. So the pitching was a little, maybe a little wonky there. But even still, South Carolina was only able to get very few runs off of it. So this AM staff has been lights out so far this year. They've really been handing it to everyone they play. They're second in team ERA behind Arkansas, who's just in a league of their own, obviously. Um, they have the most wins out of anyone in the SEC. They, they really have put it together pitching. That was the story for them heading into this season was whether or not they could do that because they got the lineup with the transfers they got in and everything for that. But now that they're putting it together, they're, they're a clear top five staff in the SEC and a clear top five team in this league. Well, number one nationally continues to be Arkansas, number one on our power rankings this week, too. A run differential of plus 39. Arkansas has given up 35 runs in league play. Next best total belongs to Kentucky at 43. Uh, after that, it's Vanderbilt at 59. Actually, Mississippi State at 56. So pitching is pretty much head and shoulders above everybody else in this league. In all games, Arkansas is allowed 82 runs. Next best is a at 119. That's a pretty substantial gap. Uh, the Hogs hit the long ball a little bit this weekend. Rotation wasn't quite what it's been, but it was good enough. They got a, a bullpen that's plenty deep. What did you see out of the Hogs this weekend? Yeah, uh, I'll get into the bullpen in a sec, but I went with them I went game by game just because at this point I need to start watching game by game with Arkansas just to make my jaw drop. But game one, <laughs> Hagen Smith, six, six innings of work, 11 strikeouts. Ole Miss was able to get two runs off of him, which seems like you know a Christmas miracle, but they were <laughs> able to do that. Will McIntyre came in in relief for him after his six innings and had uh, three strikeouts and no earned runs. So that was a common theme this weekend was how the bullpen played. Game two, the bullpen really stood out for Arkansas. Uh, Cody Frank, Christian Fouch, and Gage Wood combined for six strikeouts, no earned runs, and only three hits. And I believe – I can't remember the stretch of game time that was over, but that was three Arkansas pitchers that gave up no runs out of the bullpen. And then Brady Taggart, uh, seven strikeouts and four and a, four and a third inning of work with two earned runs. He had a great game pitching as well. And just because I feel like, you know, sometimes we don't give the Arkansas offense as much love. Some guys that stood out to me, uh, Jared Sprague, lot, uh, four RBIs this weekend. And then Nolan Souza had a huge Sunday game, five RBIs for him as well. Um, they have the, I don't know if you said it, Chris, but the one stat that stood out, stood out to me about their pitching team wise they have the fewest amount of hits given up in the SEC, and I think we talked about it last week a little, and they have it by 19 fewer hits than second place, which Goodness. is Kentucky. So they, yeah. they're, they're really just not letting anyone hit the ball, and it's, it's worked until now. We have yet to see this offense need to step up enough to compensate for pitching, but, man, I mean, the bullpen stepped up when that starting rotation didn't really, you know, didn't show anything spectacular outside of Hagen Smith, and they continue to roll. Uh, as SEC play continues. All right, that's it for our Week 9 Power Rankings. We'll be back next week with another set of Power Rankings as we'll have half the league play in the books. We'll do some recaps uh, and, and some previews, whatever we have time to do in the meantime. Anyway, for Alfred Esmond, I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14. Thanks for watching our Power Rankings presented by Bet Online.